Good morning, everybody. I have enormous pleasure and honour in speaking to you this morning as part of this important conference. Uh, in starting the morning, looking back at the history of culture in crisis on the Korean Peninsula, I uh, feel that we have millennia of time and no time to consider and to think about. I have four topics which I hope to interest you in in the short time available to me. I am fortunate to have visited both Koreas in the course of my work at the Victoria and Albert Museum and in the British, Mu British Library. And I'm particularly interested to think of Korea as a site for world culture, for cultural transmission, and for lessons for all of humanity about what happens when conflict visits in unexpected ways. Korea, as you see, is surrounded by China, by Russia, and by Japan. We will return to this uh, in geopolitical environment in a moment, but I want to begin by looking at an object which is not Korean, an object which is Chinese, a famous lacquer, lacquer basket which was excavated in the early 20th century when Korea was a colony of Japan. This basket uh, has row upon row of amazing 2,000-year-old paintings depicting people who honor their parents. Honoring your parents is a human uh, characteristic. It's a center point of East Asian Confucian civilization. This is the most potent memory of that long tradition in Korea, in Korea and in China. It comes to be in Korea because in the first century AD, parts of Korea had been colonized by Han China. After the mid 20th century, this object is hardly known outside of Korea because it is cut off by the accident of world politics and it becomes part of the collection of the North Korean National Museum, not the, uh, not the more open South Korean National Museum. I'm fortunate to have seen it myself. I'm also concerned to know where it might be now. And I think it's an object that just tells us so much about how culture expresses identity and culture crosses borders. That's my first uh, Korean lesson of culture in crisis. My second point from Korea is about place, religion, and the spread of faith from continent to continent. Korea is a site of wonderful Buddhist temples, many of which uh, were scattered across a beautiful scenic area, the Diamond Mountains, which spans the eastern coast of the Korean Peninsula. It was much painted by the scholars of the 18th and 19th centuries. It's still the subject of inspiration to artists such as Mr. Hwang in Jae, who is an eminent North Korean print artist represented in our collection here. Sadly, during the Korean War between 1950 and 1953, all the Buddhist temples in the Diamond Mountain area came to destruction. A huge heritage of human civilization and belief was lost uh, as a protracted war and, negotiation to, uh, and, and negotiations about the fate of prisoners of war uh, dragged out across three years. Carpet bombing continued across North Korea until as one scholar has said, there was nothing left to bomb. And at that time, all of the temples were lost. Here is Sokwang Temple, the temple of the Buddha King, as it was in the Japanese period. Here it is in 1910. And here it is today, one, gate, one gateway alone surviving. Other buildings are nothing but uh, architectural plans today. Many temples in that eastern part of Korea were lost in similar ways. Here is a second temple, Shingye Temple, 
all that is left of what was once a large and impressive uh, ag agglomeration of buildings is this one uh, pagoda dating to the 6th century AD. It's easy to forget that uh, such destru destruction accompanies almost every conflict that we know of. My third point is about the accidents of history that are visited upon unknowing populations. I'm turning now to the mid-19th century when Korea, then known as the Hermit Kingdom, a resolutely closed society which uh, treasured its status as a place apart with little contact outside its own borders, when that country came into conflict with the forces of expansionist colonial powers. Here we see, in the 1870s, uh, American Marines attacking Kanghua Island, which is near the, co the capital, Seoul. Uh, here we see battles on the same island. These skirmishes, these uh, attacks on the Korean state, went on for decades. In the 1880s, we, the British, set up a garrison in the island of Komundo, off the south of the Korean coast, naming it Port Hamilton and setting up our own uh, station there. Um, we sent warships, we, uh, we remained there for a couple of years, and then we moved on, ready to uh, engage in other parts of East Asia. This enforced contact with the military might of the Western world led to the militarization of Korean people themselves. Um, we have uh, troops here being, uh, being trained and we have the evidence of photography in these 19th century periods to help us trace the story. We have all the accoutrements of war as we've come to know it, hospitals, refugees, and we have prisoners and border conflict moving along. My final uh, reflections on conflict and cultural heritage in Korea take us to today and to the role of museums in the presentation of cultural identity. The modern states of Korea are of course two, the Democratic People's Republic in the north and the Republic in the south. Each has a national museum, each has a narrative, each has a, each attaches value to cultural heritage. My message, I hope, is one that sees some optimism for culture over time as a unifying and strengthening uh, element in public life. Uh, both tangible cultural heritage of the kind that we here in the museum world are so concerned with, and other cultural heritage of a literary or performative nature matter deeply to people all around the world, and that's the case in both Koreas. Although this uh, Stalinist building of the center of Pyongyang, the Korean Central History Museum, is a place that is far in its museological practice from the norms of the international community, it is nonetheless a potent statement of the importance of culture to the, na to the, na to the nation. And in the South, uh, 21st century architecture, technological achievement, and a much more open society have led to a fine national museum in the southern part of Seoul, which I imagine many in this room will have, will have visited. And we are able to see here the interior of the National Museum in the south of Korea, in the Republic, not forbidden to photographers in the way that its counterpart in the north is. I wish the conference success and look forward to making many comparisons in the course of the day. Thank you.